It looks like Steve Cooper has survived the 5-0 slapping by Fulham yesterday and limps on towards Wolves. But what are the five things we've learned from the debacle that was yesterday's performance? Welcome to your Forest News. Good morning, good evening, or good night, wherever in the world you are. Hope you're well and hope you got some sleep from last night. And welcome to the five things we learned from yesterday. And in essence, this is going to be a managerial discussion, a player discussion, a lack of fight, a lack of desire, a lack of anything right now at Nottingham Forest. As always, if you're enjoying the content, please make sure you hit that like button. If you're new here, subscribe to Forest Fan TV. And let's kick this one off with the latest breaking news. It hasn't really been broken because it was from Talk Sport, but the presser was done and Steve Cooper was behind it. And Steve Cooper survives. Will it be a last stand at Wolves? Will he reach Wolves? At the moment, all indications say yes. He's done the press conference. He's come out with his usual rhetoric. He doesn't care about him what's best for the club, all that stuff, which is literally a walking contradiction. Because if what's best for the club was for him to leave, a couple of days ago, he said, you'd have to take me out of here, kicking and screaming on my hands and knees, drag me out. Walking contradiction. I haven't changed my mind from yesterday. What I saw yesterday is inexcusable and unforgivable from him and the players. But he limps on. Why? Maybe because there's not enough time to change it. For me, I'd have got rid yesterday, put Stephen Reed in charge, and then get whoever you need to get in, Maranakis. But it looks like he'll be there for Wolves. Now, will he pull a rabbit out of his backside against Wolves? Maybe he will. Will that just pave over the cracks? I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens on Saturday. But as it stands, Steve Cooper will be in the dugout come the Wolves game. There were rumours last night that he's on the brink. There was rumours saying that Lopetegui is the front runner. There was rumours saying that Maranakis is after Marco Silva from Fulham. That one I cannot see. He's just signed a new contract. Even though he has worked previously with Maranakis, they have a good off-field relationship. I think he was with him at Olympiakos. I can't see that one happening. But at the moment, the news is that Steve Cooper will be in the dugout against Wolves. How do you guys feel about that? Are you still Cooper in? Are you Cooper out? Are you Cooper I don't know? And here's the real question, which we're going to move on into a second. Is are the players even playing for him right now? Has he lost the dressing room? So let's move on to that. So there is clearly, clearly a lack of the player's commitment right now to the cause to the what's going on on the pitch and for me he has lost the dressing room and i i've said it for a couple of weeks that he hasn't lost the dressing room in the old sense of lost the dressing room where the players have down tools and stuff i just think they don't buy into what he's doing they don't like his philosophy they don't like his playing style they don't like his ideas or lack of ideas whichever way you want to look at it and i think they're confused as well what are the instructions? The chopping and changing from the team from one game to another. Five changes the other day, uh, to last night. Changes before that. I think we've only fielded the same team after the Villa match into the West Ham match. And that didn't even work. So for me, the players are confused about what's going on. How are partnerships meant to be built? One player has a bad game. They're suddenly subbed off. Even though Cooper said we get behind them. We don't, you know, criminalize them or whatever he said for their mistakes. Well, how did that work out for Matt Turner? So at the moment for me, I'm not fully convinced the dressing room is gone, but I, I don't believe they buy into his philosophy and what he's trying to achieve. But if the dressing room fully goes, then the writing is completely on the wall for Steve Cooper. Once you lose the dressing room, as the cliche goes, you don't sack 25 players. You sack the singular which is the manager. This Wolves game is literally going to tell us everything we need to know about the players. But has he or has he not lost the dressing room? What do you guys think? Let me know down below. 
Okay, so let's move on and talk about the fans because the backlash from yesterday's result was, of course, a lot of what was being said on social media, on other platforms, etc. And there is a huge anger currently from the fan base at the players. It almost feels like the fans are turning on the players. I saw some things on Twitter or X or whatever the fuck it's called right now saying that if Cooper were to be sacked, we should sing for 90 minutes on Saturday. You let Cooper down. I just, I just, anyway, anyway. And I, I saw worse than that. I saw worse than that. But the point here is, are the fans right to be angry at the players? 100%. The players were abysmal yesterday. Shocking. Every single one of them. Even, even Murillo, who's usually our best player. He made some mistakes yesterday. Maybe Mangala, I can give a free pass to. The rest were absolutely shite. From the back to the front, from the subs and the management. This is a collective. This is the one thing I'll agree with Cooper on. This is a collective anger that should be pointed towards them. But they're absolute shite yesterday. But to just be angry at the players, there is some fans who I believe the way they are making this out are using the players to deflect and defend what Steve Cooper is doing. And that's honestly how I feel. If they can blame the players, then you don't have to blame the manager. You could argue I'm doing the opposite way around. I firmly believe this run of fixtures is on the manager. And maybe you could say I'm deflecting from the players onto the manager, but I am putting the responsibility on them as well. It's an absolute pathetic, uh, the words just, I, they don't even come out right now to how bad things are on the pitch for Forrest. But I do agree the fans should be angry at the players. I do think that some of these players are not worthy of wearing the shirts. And, I, and we will talk about one or two players in specific in some follow-up points in a second. But you cannot, you cannot just point the finger at the players and then look the other way because Cooper's your messiah. He is just as responsible for their performances as they are. Individually, collectively, they're shambolic right now. And it's really starting to wind me up. But the players, as I mentioned before, can you blame some of them? When they don't know what tactic they're playing game in, game out, where every game... They seem to be lined up based on the opponent's weaknesses and strengths rather than our strengths and weaknesses. They're playing low block football in a formation that can't handle low block football. They can't pass from one person to the other. They, there's zero cohesion. You have what well, we had five, six, maybe even seven captains already this season. Cooper talks about that yesterday. In yesterday's game alone, you saw Felipe start as captain. And then when Ryan Yates came on, Felipe gave him the armband. Now, nothing against Ryan Yates, but Felipe has had more experience in his left toe than Ryan Yates has as a leader and as a captain and everything else. And I don't, I don't actually care if Ryan Yates had started as captain. This whole captaincy thing is getting stupid. It's interchanging. More times than I've changed my goddamn underwear in a week. Seriously, it's ridiculous. So if we can't get the captain right, if we're chopping and making captain subs during a game, if we're changing the formation three or four times in a game, like we saw yesterday, where players are just thrown on left, right, and center, then how the hell are the players ever going to become a cohesive unit? How the hell is Cooper going to be able to produce results on the pitch if his instructions aren't being followed by the players. Irregardless if I, if I think his instructions are good enough or not, if he's given instructions, then they need to follow those instructions. Otherwise, it's just players all over the place on a pitch. Honestly, I see under 12 and 13 teams that have more organization on a pitch right now than we're seeing at Nottingham Forest. Let's move on to the next point. Alrighty, let's move on and talk about some of the players. And one of the players that's getting the most heat off the back of this is Sangare. Sangare, who I said the whole summer is a hell of a player. Forrest uh, blew my mind that they signed him. But the reality is he has started crap. 
He's had a couple of decent performances. We look like we missed him the other week when he was out with his virus. But he hasn't performed. And I think it's his demeanor that's probably annoying most of the Forest fan base. He just looks like he doesn't care. But that is him. That's his attitude. We told you when Thomas went down, when we did the actual signing of Sangare, even then he just had that smile on his face and that lackluster approach. That's his personality. I will not be turning on Sangare yet. I can tell you that as a fact. Sangare is a quality player. Let me remind everyone of what was being said on Renan Lodi this time last year, when especially after the Leicester match, I think it was, how a lot of people turned on him and how we told you that he is quality and he will come through. And he did. And to be honest, we're missing him right now. Yes, Tuffalo is deputized well, but he is not Lodi at that left back position. And Sangare, for me, is still being played out of position. And this is another thing against Cooper. He loves playing players out of position. Morgan Gibbs White out on the right hand side. Morgan Gibbs White dropped yesterday fully. Sangare playing more in an eight than a six. Dominguez being told not to press. It's just a mess all over the pitch. Strikers, man. Chris Wood, atrocious. Origi, half an inch better than him, but still crap. And it just shows you that as much as I thought the recruitment in the summer was good, I still think it was tailored around a five-back formation with the amount of goddamn defenders we signed. And there's so much revisionism going on about player injuries right now. We have one player out, Taiwo. Taiwo, the player that Cooper used in a couple of matches last season as a left winger because he didn't fancy him as a striker. The player that now, because he's injured, is meant to be our saviour. And the player that may be keeping Steve Cooper in a job right now because apparently Forrest can't get anything without one player missing from a squad of 24. Yes, there are knocks and niggles in the team, but in essence, most of that team is fit or close to fitness. So I'm not buying this ex excuse of injury, nor am I buying this throw Sangare under the bus business because he still needs to adjust. He still can't speak a word of English. He's still probably not even fully fit or recovered from his illness that he picked up on international duty. So chucking Sangare under the bus is not the solution. There are plenty of worse players currently who are being put on the pitch than Sangare. But things have to change because, again, we're just repeating the same madness over and over again. And guess what? The results aren't changing. They're not changing. And that brings us on to our next point which is what is going to happen next. We got Wolves coming up. Now, let's assume Cooper makes it to the weekend, which it looks like he will. What are we expecting? Gary O'Neill has somewhat turned things around again for Wolves. He has them playing more of a team than Forrest are. And it's away from home. Let's just bring those stats back up. Yes, they're embarrassing, but they need to be talked about. Two wins. Two wins in 27 games. One win per season away from home currently with Nottingham Forest. Four defeats out of the last five. One win in 11. It's just not working. It really isn't. Now, what happens if Forest go and beat Wolves on Saturday? Is everything hunky-dory in the garden? Every smile comes back on the face? Are we all happy because maybe we think Forest have turned a corner? Or is this just going to be paving over the cracks? And what happens if Forest draw or lose? If Forrest lose this one, that's three winnable games we have now missed out on because clearly the team isn't working. Everton, um, Fulham, and Wolves. I'm not saying we would have won all those games, but I'm saying they were potential winnable games. And then what happens? Let's say Forrest lose to Wolves. Then we got Spurs, Bournemouth, Newcastle, and Man U all in December. Tough games, every single one of them. Where are the points coming from? Forget where are the points coming from. Where's the next goal coming from currently? Steve Cooper is going to need to pull the almightiest of rabbits out of his ass if he is to turn things around. And could he still go if we lose against Wolves? Is Maranakas just buying himself some time to get the recruitment right? Maybe he's in negotiations with whichever manager he's choosing. Who knows right now? All I know is that everything is turning into a complete mess 
And this ship needs to be steered back on course and back on course quickly. Because before you know it, we are really going to be in a relegation battle. So either Cooper's got to sort his crap out and get things sorted on the pitch, get the players back in line, or Maranakis has to pull a trigger. All I know for sure is everything is going to come to a head come Saturday. And we are going to have more answers than questions once that final whistle goes. That is for sure. I'm off to see Big Norm now. I need to reminisce about the good old days where things were rosier in the garden. Yes, we had 23 years of crap, but we'll forget that for one evening. So if you're coming tonight, I look forward to seeing you guys at In For A Penny. We'll be there. Well, I think the doors open from 6.30. So if you come in, make sure you come and say hi and we'll have a chat. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. I'll either see you tonight or tomorrow. Come on, you Reds.